These tires don't even go past these fork link bolts. So I'm having an issue with this throttle off the old chow fitting on these new handlebars. So we've had to cut this massive great big hole out. Good morning on day two from wet and windy Bristol. Dan is busy unmasking the freshly painted chow frame. Morning. And uh, we've had a bit of sleep. We are ready for the rebuild. I'll try and show you uh, all the parts that need to go back on. It's not too bad to be honest, they're quite simple. So we've got a whole table of parts there. A few bits that we painted as well on the bench, just put this rather nice rug down to uh, protect everything when we do the rebuild. And uh, yeah, quite excited today to uh, put the thing back together again. Had a couple of issues. Firstly, I'm having an issue with this throttle off the old chow fitting on these new handlebars. I had to basically grind all the chrome off. Uh, it kind of works now, it's not the best. Hopefully, it's going to be okay. And these wonderful tyres we have, which are 2.5 by 19s, the uh, old ones were 2 by 19, so these are actually much chunkier and they don't even go at the moment past these fork link bolts. So we're gonna whiz those off, hopefully get a bit more clearance and just hoping that the tire doesn't hit the top of the box. <laughs> nice nice t-shirt by the way. Oh yes, yes, yes. Available yes. online. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> get more hot. Right, let's whiz these off. Well, there's plenty of room. Yeah, there. so, yeah. That's fine. I was never worried, Scott. No, that's fine on that one. <laughs> the uh, That always had quite a bit of clearance with the mud guard. So this, and we're still yet to tell whether it's going to hit there. But that looks, look at that, dude. I thought we were going to find an issue with this tyre and was it hitting the, the centre stand spring? Yes, yeah, well? the centre stand spring first. And it's then... hitting that, but then just there, that big tyre is hitting the, I don't know what you call that, the cross, bit that takes the cross tube or something. The cross tube, yeah, it takes the, uh, the pedals. So I don't know how much meat we got there, but we're going to grind a section out of there just to make a bit of clearance for that tyre. So we've had to cut this massive, great big hole out. We're hoping that's going to be enough clearance for the tire. Um, it seems to clear this, I mean, it's tight, but it seems to clear this mud guard, but that was where it was rubbing. Please let it go. At least we can see now as well. You get a good light. idea of how close it is, it's really close to that bar. I still feel 
like it's touching something. Right? Yeah, it is. I can see where it's touching. Yeah. Right in there. Fantastic. But not much though. It's literally just touching. Does that bolt line up? It will line up. Yeah. But I mean, like, if you squish it. That. Just need like another few mil. It's pushing in the rubber a little bit on the tire, isn't it? Right, wheel back out, a bit more clearance going on. That was a nightmare. This wheel clearance thing, uh, Dan did a great job of getting that painted back again. I did a bit of hole sawing, <laughs> combined effort. Yeah. Um, anyway, it just about clears. It's literally, oh, I don't know, it's three or four mil clearance, but of course it's a brand new tire. I'm not just saying to Dan, the more you ride it, the more clearance. <laughs> so tire wears down. Um, yeah, it's getting there. Handlebars are loosely on there. I mean, I don't think it's going to take too much to put the engine in and stuff, but we've got all this cabling to do. Anyway, we're cracking on. Cracking on. Cracking good. I made this little bracket here, just to, um, I'll show you in a minute, but it's just to hold the headlight on there. Just going to give that a quick coat of paint. Yeah, all these little fiddly things are just the ones who are uh, going to sit there. So these little fiddly things just take so long. Anyway, we're getting there. So we're bashing away still, uh, front light is on with that little bracket I made. Uh, the, back, the back seat, <laughs> the seat is kind of on. So we're just gonna try and uh, fit the sissy bar on there now, which might, well, we'll need some new holes drilled. But anyway, let's get in there. Just been fiddling around for ages with these tall handlebars. Every cable is custom length, so yeah, we've got all the cables down. I'm really pleased actually. We, they're all got kind of super, super neat. There, we just put some heat shrink on them all, and uh, a tidy job with those cables. It's quite neat on these chows because they uh, got a little cover there as well. Quite like that. We've just been trying to fire up this engine and like we weren't, well, we were getting the tiniest of spark just through the HT lead. So we've swapped out the coil for another coil. We've tried various HT caps, all the rest of it, spark plugs, etc. So we finally got a spark and that's with this Lambretta coil which is sort of just jerry-rigged. I mean, it is like <laughs> botched. Then uh, we put a bit of fuel in the fuel tank and found out the fuel tap doesn't work, just doesn't let any fuel through. So again, we jerry-rigged this little, it's a little beauty. tank up. Uh, so now we got some fuel. So we are now gonna see if we can start. We got the ingredients for it to fire. We got spark. We have got fuel and we are starting, and this is the genius with these mopeds. I never realized you could do this, but rather than pedaling, you just put a cordless drill, turns the crank over. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's see if we can start this puppy up. We've also got um, the throttle 
kind of <laughs> I cherry rigged here, so it's literally it's like a four hand job to start this thing. But here we go. Yeah, what can go wrong? Right, okay. Well, Who's doing the throttle? You, you can do I'm it. I'm doing the throttle. Is this gonna fall off? That's no. best, I know. Right, here we go. All right. Oh, I think we need to adjust the tick over, but... It works! Oh my word! Ow! That is just... That's uh, fault finding at its very best. Mind blown, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as well as getting all this stuff Jerry rigged up, it's like... Uh, we mess around with the points, we clean them out, and yeah, we've been behind the scenes, been like... <laughs> spent about a couple of hours getting this thing ready. Oh man, I'm so pleased. That's it, that's a wrap for for the for the chow. For the chow, chow, chow. Chow, chow. <laughs> uh, we, we need to think of a name for the chow. Uh, so if, yeah, comment below, if anyone's got any uh, thoughts. What a couple of days it's been. Yeah, it's been good fun. It's been a, been a lot more work than I thought it was. I mean, the bike was battling us at every single opportunity, even though it's a pretty basic moped there's there's a lot of things that aren't standard with it but i mean it was good it's a different thing to work on the things that battled us were obviously the the tires the oversized tires not fitting that just took forever that was the biggest um, one yeah probably saw on the footage the wheel came in and out probably eight times at least yep. uh the handlebars just slightly too big for all the chow controls there that was a bit of a battle getting the engine running the engine running so yeah but I mean, we've done all this in two days yep. and it's not completely finished. We're missing a couple of parts just uh, for the drive chain, if you like, the variators missing. So we can't take it on the test drive yet. And there's, I mean, the exhaust is absolutely battered. It's got holes in loads of places welded yep. up. So we're gonna get a few new bits. The coil as well, that's stopping us running and the leaking fuel tap. So yeah, I mean, I've been, trying to persuade Dan, hopefully, to come back, you know, we're finished. All right, as we say in Austria, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> uh, that would be amazing, um, you know, and then we'll do a test drive. But yeah, we hope you've enjoyed the build. And I mean, personally, it's come out better than I, you know, uh, dreamed of. It's a very, really. very unique machine. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. So it's, I, it's fun to build something like creative and just something different and just, go for it you know not worry about making everything super nice and perfect and just have a bit of fun with it basically yeah that's it yeah well that's the kind of vibe i go i go for i guess uh cobweb garage vibe As, and you know even putting it together there was things i sort of wanted to change a bit but it's a work in progress so yeah thank you very much for watching um don't forget to hit the subscribe button like us on facebook and instagram we have merchandise for sale dan is modeling uh Cobra Gary's t-shirt and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you.